You guys really want to see this video, huh? You know, I believe this is the first time an actual Five Nights at Freddy's tuber, yeah, it feels weird saying that I'm a FNAF tuber, that has actually really ever covered this game. Maybe it's an entirety. Five Nights at Fudge Boys, sorry I can't swear in like the first 30 seconds or else I'm instantly demonetized. This fan game is one of the earliest ones, much earlier than Candy's one. This one, by the way, going back all the way to November of 2014. Specifically November 22nd of 2014, just only 11 days after Five Nights at Freddy's 2 dropped. This is actually the first ever FNAF fan game to ever release. Like, I'm not joking, it really is. Now, it did only release on Tumblr, which, you know, that's not game job, but hey, it counts. And by the way, if you're wondering when Treasure Island came out, it came out in December of 2014. So about like a month or so after that one came out. So it was later uploaded to Game Jolt in early 2015. And well, due to the entire fact that a fat load of you wanted this video and well, to be honest, I was planning to do a Frick Boys video at some stage. I guess now is a better time than never because I'm actually starting to cover some fan game content by actually taking a look at the Five Nights at... Flip Boys games. So I want to go through these games as much as I can, at least try to cover, you know, the good stuff that everyone wants me to talk about. So let's kick off this special video by taking a look and playing some Five Nights at Frick Boys 1. Yeah, I couldn't really come up with any other words that begin with the letter F to replace with a funny swear word. Uh, I'm just gonna get out of here while I can. So I should mention that I am playing the Complete Collection, a fan-made remaster of the games we'll be talking about today. So it isn't exactly one-to-one -one with the original release. So for my first playthrough I chose Night X because I thought initially it was one-to-one. -one. Whoops. So we play as Freddy and, well, we just basically get started. He gives us the iconic Ready for Freddy line. Uh, I don't want to be like, you know, an idiot, but is this where the line came from? Is that, what, is that where the whole Ready for Freddy thing just sort of came from, from this game? I don't know, may maybe. We need to recruit the other members of our party, being Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and you need to do a little side quest in order to unlock them. They're fairly easy to get, like, Chica, for instance, can be obtained by simply entering the kitchen after punching the door a handful of times. Bonnie needs his face back, which you can get a face voucher for him in the girls' bathroom, the women's bathroom, which Freddy cannot enter because he's afraid of losing his masculinity. <laughs> he probably bans people for using Karomi profile pictures on Discord. You get Bonnie's face voucher, which gives him a free Bonnie head, which really, we didn't even need to go through all that trouble because there's literally like 15 heads in the parts and service room, and you know, Freddy does call him an insufferable piece of garbage, so mate, me and Freddy, we're going places. Foxy needs to have Pirate's Cove burnt down because he's doing something really interesting that you probably shouldn't know. After that, you need to take on all of these security cameras which act as like the bosses, only to access the final boss of the game. So obviously, this is an RPG, that means we need to grind our asses off and get all the best equipables in the game. Every character learns a new move every five levels, and the cap is at 20. You have three bars, one for HP, another for SP, meaning special. Uh, this gives you access to your special moves or skills. Then there's TP, which isn't exactly useful until some later abilities. This game also having the fabled line, <clears throat> Inhale my dong enragement child. Oh yeah, I should really mention that, shouldn't I? I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. This is just something that's gonna be a thing for the entire series as a whole. This game seriously reeks of 2014 era memes. Specifically montage parodies. Like MLG montage parodies. Like, do, does anyone remember MLG Teletubbies? Pyrocynical of all people. The boss fights, once again being the cameras, all have like a unique gimmick for them, uh, so like maybe one will be super strong but attack every two turns, or one will have a, a natural poison, or, or the storage camera that is completely useless, because all it does is it heals you, which I think for an RPG is just bad design, but 
Yeah. So, a uh, quick tip, go for the storage camera first, it's basically free XP. And then you just sort of take out the ones that obviously are easy, and then you move up as you get stronger and, you know. Later on though, the game sort of actually kind of gets to get a little more challenging, since obviously the cap is at 20, so you can't just like, get to level 100 and then just insta-kill everything. You, you have to actively strategize in what to do, which I kind of like. I, I actually had to use my brain for once, which is something you never really see these days in these games. Once you've defeated enough cameras, a puppet timer will begin to tick down. Once it hits zero, you'll have to fight the puppet. The puppet is a very tough fight, and it's basically forced upon you that you have to do it. Now, if you actually lose the fight, nothing happens. So technically all you really have to do is just lose the fight, it really doesn't matter. I beat it though, so uh, whoops. And then after you beat the first puppet, there's now a second one. In the first game, it's just an optional fight, but later on, uh, we'll be seeing uh, that, that son of a gun a little bit later. The second puppet, which is even stronger than the last one, you also have the Guardian Hats, which will unlock a Balloon Boy shop. Here you can buy weapons, armor, items, stuff like that. The best items can be obtained after defeating the puppet, I think, because you need to fight the four toy animatronics, which give you special weapons for each character. They're the best weapons, so I highly recommend getting these as soon as you can. Do all that, and you're basically ready for the final boss. Be sure to stack up on healing items and stuff, because this boss is all kinda tanky, the boss being Golden Freddy. And it's guarded by like, four party hats, so take them all out and focus on the big guy in the middle. After beating him, the game finishes with a Spongebob reference. It's not even voiced. Like, they didn't even voice anything with it, you know? I'll, I'll do it for you. Five nights later. And then it just sort of ends with Freddy saying how stupid all this was. Yeah, I agree with you, Freddy boy. So, uh, you probably want to know what not XX is. And the other one being XX. X. Originally, I thought this was a just a difficulty slider like the original that just sort of just all it does it lowers the level cap and that's it. But my friend actually told me that it basically changes the game, kinda. So yeah, I played it for another playthrough for here. Uh, so really, all that happens is you get a new dungeon to explore. There's also a new battle gimmick. Uh, basically, you just can't constantly gorge healing items and drinking items all the time. Uh, that's really as far as it goes. I actually really didn't want to do it at the time, mainly because I saw the stats for the second puppet, which you need to defeat in order to access that content. Just look at it, but I managed to do it, so hooray. Once you do it, you'll be- you can go to the stage and you'll go to outer space. Here, you have to deal with oxygen as well as a- another boss called the Cosmic Puppet and you also get two attacks in a single turn, and the final final boss being Plus Trap. It was originally supposed to be a teaser for another F Frick Boys game, but just ended up being cancelled, which is kind of unfortunate, I guess. And then there's also a secret final boss being Grandmaster Balloon Boy. He took off his MLG clothing finally, yes, he came to his senses. To access this, you need to beat the puppet and the toys. He's the hardest fight in the game and has two phases. Beat him and the game is finally over. And if you're wondering about the Knight Triple X's, um, no, it's just basically impossible mode, it's, that's really about it. There is also two extra scenario modes that basically, it's just the same game, but with a little twist. So the first one I played is the BB scenario, and all it really does is let you play as BB, and you also get to have four extra party members, the puppet and the three toy animatronics. The boss being mangled this time around. Really, this is fairly easy, I didn't really have to go through much trouble for this. I just take out all the security cans and fight the mangle, which is an easier fight compared to Golden Freddy. After beating it, Balloon Boy will just celebrate, and you actually need to quit the game in order to beat it. There's no credit sequence, you'll just celebrate until the end of time. He's clearly not some MLG Dorito Mountain Dew consuming gamer. He just picked out that fit because he thought he would make him look cool. That's all there is for the BB scenario. We have one more scenario to take a look at, and that's the vile scenario. No, before any of you ask, it isn't anything disgusting because it's vile. It's actually the base game, but you play as vile from Mega Man X? I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah, he's completely busted being able to attack twice in a single turn, having all of his abilities from the get-go. You get stat boosts by defeating the cameras, and he has some of the best interactions in the entire game in my opinion. You gain levels by reading these three books, which give a little backstory about Vile. 
You see, he's trying to find his dad via time travel and decided to explore here in Freddy's. The final fight being against the memory core things. I could easily make out what the last one was because it was just then drowned. I couldn't identify the other two though, unfortunately. That actually being all I have for Five Nights at Fuckboys 1. I really enjoyed this game quite a bit, though I do feel that the comedic factor does seem to fizzle out near the end of the game. Not completely, of course, it is still there, of course, but it just kind of focuses more on the, you know, actual RPG side of things. It's still good, though. Overall, I enjoyed my time with it. Not surprised, to be completely honest with you, but we're not done just yet. We still have a couple games to look at, so let's talk about Five Nights at Fuckboys 2. So, the sequel. Really, I found it to be the exact same as the last one, just some extra stuff. For my playthrough, I played Proud Mode, which gives me the healing handicaps from Knight XX. It's exactly the same, really. This time, we have to recruit the toy animatronics. Toy Bonnie can be found in an event, and we have to get him out. She can eat a cupcakes, and Mangle needs something that I will not mention. Toy Bonnie is pretty easy, just put over with a stick to get him out. You can also get a special weapon that's really good until later in the game. Also, you get to fight Splash Woman from Mega Man 9 for some reason. She's apparently Toy Freddy's ex, which questions me because did they have to get approval from Dr. Wily? Anyway, she apparently cheated on Toy Freddy like 10 times, so we defeat her and unlock Chica. Foxy steals Mangle's item and we defeat him to get it back. We then unlock Mangle. So it plays the same as the first game, fight the cameras, take on the final boss as usual. Like the last one, there's a camera that's a total pushover, so it's free XP. The puppet will fight you again, and last time I beat him first try. Now though, the second puppet is on a timer, about two-ish hours. So basically, it's a countdown to my impending doom. You can actually unlock the withered animatronics by fighting them. They're exactly the same as the ones from game one, so I'd recommend getting withered Freddy, then either Foxy or Bonnie, or just get all of them. I did eventually fight the second puppet, and well, I actually beat it. Uh, there's quite a bunch of bosses exclusive to Proud Mode, and uh, there's a new character exclusive to this being Golden Freddy. He's not that good to be honest, which is kind of unfortunate. Anyway, the bosses exclusive to this are Shadow Bonnie by defeating every camera, Two Pack by collecting every tape, Toy Freddy, a portal will appear in the hallway, Freddy Plush will randomly be encountered, then Refurbs, which is the FNAF 1 squad, just stronger. This is the secret boss of the game, by the way. Also, the final boss is Balloon Boy, and it's nice to know that Balloon Boy is actually Gigas from Earthbound of all games. Uh, that's all I really have to say about Fuckboys 2. So, let's just jump straight into the BB scenario. Yes, it returns in this game, and like last time, it's not too difficult. Only this time, I had two party members. I have no clue if I can actually get any others, but I might have missed out since I never killed all the cameras or bosses. There isn't much to talk about, really, but the final bosses of the game is against Toy Freddy and the others, which is pretty cool. The ending, once again, involves BB popping off like he's hungry box, and you just have to close the game to actually finish it. There isn't really anything else to talk about the BB scenario for this game, it's like with Fuckboys 2, it's just the same as the first one really. So a Discord member told me to put the after story uh, here instead of giving it its own segment, so yeah. And uh, by the way, there's a picture of Michael Jackson here, so we're probably going to go to court. Honestly, it's a bit of a mind fuck, so I'll explain it as thoroughly as I can. So it all starts with the final boss of the first game, Golden Freddy, and you lose the fight. Freddy narrowly escapes and sees the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Balloon Boy is traveling back to the 80s. All of a sudden, you now have to fight Michael Jackson. Then after defeating him, he'll transform into Mecha Jackson, and a whitey MPV of Doomsday Zone from Sonic 3 will play. Freddy will go to the land of Vaporwave and fight some enemies, and over time his allies will just sort of fall out of the sky. I'm not joking, that's what it says, and you'll fight Withered Golden Freddy and get some sunglasses. You'll go to the fake credit sequence when Freddy discovers what BB's up to. After that, you'll then fight the toy animatronics and the Withered ones, so it's basically the refurb fight, but the roles are swapped really. Fight isn't that bad, focus on the Chicas first and you should be alright. You'll then all team up to destroy BB, so you go to his palace, heal up and you fight him. It's a three-phase fight and you play as the Withered characters, toys, then FNAF 1 characters. Uh, by the way, his balloon says 100% Latina, meaning he probably made videos making fun of Lele puns. He'll then turn into his final form, 
and then you fight with every group. So you fight with the Bonnies, Foxies, and Chicas, and finally Freddy. Uh, by the way, the music that plays in the back is One Winged Angel from Final Fantasy VII. And instead of it saying Sephiroth, it, it just says Enragement Child. <laughs> it's pretty funny, to be honest. I didn't find the fight actually that difficult, really. Pretty much ends after story. Everyone just sort of returns to their respective time zone and really about it. Yeah, I know there wasn't really much to be worth talking about with this one, but like I already said, it's really just the first one, but really with a lot more content. I enjoyed this one more than the first one, however. I think it's better, just really only by slightly. There's just a lot more content really diving into, and that's really as far as it goes for me, in my opinion. Definitely the best one so far. After Story is a bit of a, a laugh, uh, really. It's, it's pretty wild, but... It's the kind of funny, kind of wild. It's not too confusing, I, I think. I mean, it was confusing at the beginning when you fought Michael fucking Jackson, but hey, whatever. So we finally have the last two games to look at, uh, starting with Five Nights at Fuckboys 3. So this is probably the longest game in the series, having three acts to play through. Obviously we play as Springtrap since this is based off of FNAF 3, and we have to get inside the office as per usual, but this time things are much different. You see, there are no cameras to fight, so instead we need to fight the Phantom Guardians, who block the office door via key locks. So Springtrap needs to do a simple task in order to awaken said Guardian and fight them. You may have noticed that you have no party members, you only have access to Springtrap throughout the entire game, so they made him one of the best characters in the game. He attacks twice and has a boatload of skills, the first Phantom being Chica and can be accessed by giving her a toy Freddy head. So Phantom BB takes us to Atari Land, and there we fight Phantom Chica. Defeating the bosses of this area will give you special moves, and defeating the cameras will give you special trinkets that help out in battle. I should also mention that the bosses are crazy in this game. Mainly tanky, but, you know, because Springtrap, like I already mentioned, he's kind of one of the best characters in the game. So they have to make the bosses just sort of fit around his level. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Phantom Mangle needs a thing, uh, so you fight a Phantom Metal Endo Head for it. Foxy needs some privacy, and Freddy needs to be cleaned up, and for you to defeat his hat. Doing all of that, and you're almost finished with the main story. But there are some optional bosses that aren't exclusive. You have Trash and the Gang, Rockstar Freddy, Music Man, Endoskeleton, Lefty and Helpy, and finally Scrap Trap, the final boss of the game in the story being Ennard. I didn't really have too much problems with these guys, but Scrap Trap over here, sitting with 200,000 HP, oh my Christ, please end me. I beat him though, it wasn't that difficult to be honest. The puppet once again returns and, you know, like every time I defeat it as well as its past form. Yeah, there's no second puppet this time. Uh, the optional boss 2 pack from uh, the last game also returns as an optional fight and you get a new weapon. Not gonna tell you what it is because you have to find that out for yourself. So you may be wondering, wait, so what happens with Proud Mode? Well, out of all the games, Proud Mode in this one just really isn't worth it at all. You only get access to the, the Golden Freddy boss fight. That's the only boss exclusive to Proud Mode. So really, you're just basically putting a handicap on yourself. So, for those who decide to play through these games, I really wouldn't bother unless you have nothing better to do and show off to strangers. So, while Springtrap does his dramatic entrance, yes, he actually does this, we actually learn that Springtrap has decided to bring BB back to life, so the entire time we've been aiding the bad guy. Like, what does BB think he is? A Kirby antagonist? Springtrap becomes swag, and that ends Act 1. So, Act 2 is fairly shorter, so we won't be here for very long. Here, we play as... Golden Freddy, and his whole gimmick is summoning. He could summon enemies and shadow Freddy, all with unique attacks. You just need to take out the cameras and you're good. We also get some story building, the relationship of Golden Freddy and Springtrap. See, Springtrap said no to Golden Freddy about joining him in it on his night of debauchery, and was pissed off ever since. Yeah, it's it's like it's like the it's like the backstory behind Doofenshmirtz in the second in the Phineas and Ferb movie. 
it, it's like that. It's really stupid. So one thing I really found funny is that apparently if Golden Freddy decides to leave, he'll go shop at a Walmart and like, imagine being like a Walmart employee and just seeing Golden Freddy walk in. Also, uh, I decided not to buy anything because I didn't have enough money at the time. And he apparently goes to Starbucks instead uh, if you don't buy anything. Like, considering that like most Discord e-girls work at a Starbucks. Just imagine being that person and just seeing Golden Freddy just walk in, ask for a, ask for a fucking latte. That'd be so wild. The final camera, I should mention, it's literally just Duke Nukem. Like, literally when you approach it, you'll just hear it say, I've got balls of seal. And that's what it'll do. After that, we take on Springtrap in the office. Also, BB's here, but once he's down to half health, he just dips. Then it's just Springtrap and he decides to burn down Fazbear's Fright and you with him. And you both fight to the death. At the end, the building collapses and any traces of Springtrap and Golden Freddy are all gone. And, like, obviously, the credits reveal that BB made it out, which obviously leads into Act 3 or the finale. Uh, but first, let's waste our time further by talking about the puppet scenario. So, like the BB scenario before it, it's just the base game, but you play with BB instead. This one, it's just a boss fight. It's just a boss fight against Springtrap with 240k HP. Oh, fuck, that's like a quarter of a million. Why? Doesn't even matter, because if you win, it still results with a game over anyway. So it's completely a waste of time. So I wasted 45 minutes on that. Good for me, I guess. This one has a lot of new stuff for this one, which I think if they just went for the whole Fuckboys 2 approach again, I probably would have gotten fairly bored. Act 2 is fairly short and is probably the weakest part of the game, in my opinion, but I don't think it's like terrible. I think it's just pretty cool. It's just good, I guess. And uh, honestly, just don't bother with the puppet mode like I did. We only have one game to look at, and that is going to be the finale. So, it's finally come to this. Freddy wants to go on a vacation, so forces his friends to go along with him. You accidentally head to the future and encounter Vile, and it's here that it's revealed to be Toy Freddy's son. Yes, Vile is actually Toy Freddy's son. After that, we now need to access BB by turning off his generators. Uh, there are two to be found in these dungeons, so similar to the Night XX area from the first game. Honestly, this part is really tedious for me. This is really what makes this entire part of the game one of the longest. Uh, there is a boss at the end of each of these, and defeating it obviously unlocks the generator, the first being Shadow Freddy. You also get special items, and interacting with Toy Freddy will give you access to some of the secret bosses. Uh, we have Cranky Kong, Endo Prime, that's basically a Transformer. And then there's Splash Woman returning from Fuckboys to returning from Mega Man 9. You also have to fight the Phantom Animatronics who make their return and then make your way to the second generator and fight the puppet. And newcomer to the series, Dreadbear, to unlock them both. Then finally comes the ending of it all to fight BB. His first phase is fairly easy, but his second phase, it's kind of annoying. See, he transforms and gains 200k HP, and two dream cameras that act as a sort of meat shield for him, so you need to take out the cameras, then unload on BB. Also, Egg Reverie from Sonic Mania plays in the background, making this final encounter just go way much harder than it needs to. Beating it will finally give us uh, BB's final form, and he's basically reached godhood at this point. Leviathan BB. Freddy is now on his own and sent his friends back to Vaporland where they can be at peace. Freddy just basically goes Ultra Instinct and smacks BB. Then at the end of this fight, you do your ultimate move and finish off BB for good. It's, it's like the classic trope of it's a god and some loser and then it's just like it doesn't matter if the, the the little guy gets beat up he just suddenly goes like absolute ultra instinct and just insta kills the god or something like that honestly it would have been better if freddy dropped the signature one line into enragement children you know that probably would have made it a little better 
or maybe even goofy, I don't know. We then get our final credit sequence, and that ends Five Nights at Fuckboys. So, there we go, all Fuckboys games done and dusted. So let's get my whole review business done and out of the way with, shall we? Honestly, I'm quite speechless. This series is kind of the same story as Day Shift, if I'm being honest. The first one's pretty cool, then it's expanded in the sequel, and the third it gives a little bit more story. Uh, no, it's not exactly one-to-one -one with Day Shift, but there's a lot of similarities between the two, so... My real question is, why does no one ever talk about this game? Considering the first game is, like, probably the first ever FNAF fan game ever, wouldn't people talk about it more considering its history? I mean, I can understand that MLG Humor died when Parasynical made his MLG Teletubbies video, but that's the same thing as Day Shift, really. Overall, though, I really gotta say, God, this entire series slaps. I know there are problems with it, and RPGs aren't exactly everyone's cup of tea. The comedic factor is obviously very, very dated, but this series needs more attention. So, I guess I can make this my pick for the most underappreciated FNAF fan game out there. Well, that's all I wanted to cover for this video. I really hope I managed to satisfy those of you that have been waiting for this video, and have been basically begging for it. This video did take a good while to make, so... Uh, mainly from how long RPGs usually take to beat anyway. So, uh, if you want to, if you haven't already, uh, consider subscribing. It's greatly appreciative and uh, liking the video would also be pretty cool as well. You can also follow my socials, uh, we have my Twitter, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's that website. It's uh, at Nitro and then C1TY, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get a, uh, see my original, see the, my, the actual name. I think it's taken by someone else, so this is the best I could do for right now. You can also have my Discord server, it's link in the description. And uh, trust me guys, it is not a cesspit. I promise you. Uh, thanks everybody so much for watching, have a good day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!